Today we're celebrating this church's 34th year of being an institution uh, since its founding as a chartered member of the Unity Worldwide Association of Ministries. I think um, I came here 18 years ago, and in that time, I have been so happy and felt so lucky that this community has been so stable and so well organized that in many ways, the church is a shining example of what a community can so do. So I like. want to talk to you about something I think we need to work on, um, not as though we're in a deficit as a community, but that we need to work on to make ourselves healthier and to make our community, both this one and, but more importantly, the larger community healthy. As everybody knows, this is a rancorous ta time in our nation um, a time where um, anger and upset seems to be much more pro pro prevalent, excuse me, prevalent than compassion, understanding, and generosity. And so if we can deepen into the skills that it takes to keep the world together, keep families together, keep a church together, I think we will profit it's greatly by that. Forgiveness, meaning a deep understanding of the nature of things, that it's really not possible for someone to be your enemy because they're really you. And there's really no way for them to really harm you because you're not the body. And if we could get those two things, I think we might be able to naturally slide into a deeper way of seeing the world, a deeper way that allows us to remember we are really one with each other not separate. So much of what happens in a relationship is what we say. Sometimes it's things we do, but much more of the interaction of a relationship is verbal. And so one of the things I think we should really start off with is this idea of being careful rather than crushing the other. If you think about this idea of being careful, you, would, you, you weigh your words to see with the thought I hope this still allows me to move closer to this person. And once we do that, I think we can set up a space for us to be curious instead of critical. If we have not offended them so much that they need to attack, that we can then begin to unwrap what is going on between us. If we could be curious and wonder where this is coming from not in such a way as we to correct them, but why does it feel that way for you? Tell me more is one of my favorite phrases in this situation. Tell me more. And it may be that they are not being all that pleasant in my direction, but if I can remember to say, tell me more, then ultimately they feel heard. Let's hope they ultimately feel heard and they come back with more of the same for me. It seems it's the beginning of a mutual experience to be curious. And along that same line, you know, try to ask rather than assume. Many times we assume that their motivation is whatever we would be doing in that situation. We assume that they're just like us. We assume that if they said that, they meant to hurt our feelings. We assume a lot of things, but it doesn't have to be true that we can't ask we can ask and if we ask we might be surprised and i think all that sets up the idea that maybe we should work on connecting first they say in a marriage you have to have five five times as many good encounters as bad ones five times as many praises as complaints if you want the marriage we to need last. to find ways to connect to the part of them that needs reassurance and a sense of acceptance and love finding a way to be interested in them find a way to care when we make them. our intention to connect then all those parts i just said should fall into place that you will be um, kinder, making space for them. You'll be curious and ask, and then there will be room 
for this connection. Now, in this time period when there is so much animosity between the left and the right, and social media has poisoned so many minds against the other, I think one of the things that we might want to do is take a break from reading news feeds that are not from uh, trusted sources, not from your friends, not from your friends' friends, not from what Google sends you or from Facebook sends you, but try to find a neutral, long-standing, trustworthy news source so that we don't are not filled with conspiracy theories and theories of why the other people are terrible. It's time for us to become wiser in our what we and consume. Think about how we can love each other. And this would work in your home. This would work in your neighborhood. It would work in the country that we begin to engage the world with respect. It doesn't mean you will necessarily meet it on the first day from the other person. However, we didn't come here just to be at the effect of the world. We came here to involve ourselves in the world in such a way that we help create the world. Let us use this time as a strong spiritual community that has been around for 34 years to deepen into our own teachings so that we actually march out into the world not to conquer. Let's use but these to techniques to bring us together. Let's be curious. Let's ask. Let's make it safe for them to speak. And then let's make one of our intentions in the conversation to really, truly connect. I think our hearts have always been longing to come home to a place where we're well understood. And I think that's why we have come to this place, to Unity of the Triangle, because we have felt that in this place, people are willing to understand us. Let's now share that with the world. This is our homecoming, but it can bring the rest of the world home to us. If we will start this practice of reducing our separateness and embracing the world as it is.